Did you know that Marilyn Monroe confessed to having relations with Joan Crawford, or that Greta Garbo's most notorious relationship was with Marlene Dietrich? Today, we're going to be looking at the top 30 gay closet cases in the long history of the golden age of Hollywood. Let's begin. Marilyn Monroe has been known as a quintessential sex symbol for any heterosexual red-blooded male. But therein lies a great irony, as Monroe was not the solely man-eating siren her image suggested. It's probably hard to comprehend even the slightest possibility of Monroe actually preferring women over men. And yet, the some like it hot and the seven-year itch starlet professed to having erotic and impassioned encounters with such names as Joan Crawford, Barbara Stanwyck, Marlene Dietrich, Judy Garland, Bridget Bardo, French actress, Jane Russell, Anne Baxter, and among others, even the heterosexual Elizabeth Taylor. Now, in many of the names mentioned above, there's actually evidence to Monroe's lesbian get-togethers, particularly for starters with Joan Crawford, when Monroe began to see psychiatrist Dr. Ralph Greenson towards the end of her life. In taped transcripts of Monroe's sessions, she confessed in stating about Crawford, Oh yes, Crawford, we went to Joan's bedroom. She had a gigantic orgasm and shrieked like a maniac. Next time I saw Crawford, she wanted another round. After I turned her down, she became spiteful. A source close to Monroe said, Marilyn decided not to have a long affair with Crawford because she didn't trust Joan, who could be cruel and demanding and hated being shown up by another woman. Marilyn made the right decision. Joan became particularly spiteful after Marilyn refused to go to bed with her again. To make it even more clear, Monroe's co-workers definitely believed that she was bisexual. Director Jean Negolesco, who Monroe worked with on How to Marry a Millionaire, quoted Monroe as having told him once that she had never had an orgasm with a man in her entire life. If you go weak at the knees at the sight of a woman in a suit, you have Marlene Dietrich to thank for it. A product of the art-centric Weimar culture in early 20th century Germany, Dietrich lived freely and fearlessly. She regularly donned pants and tuxes on the silver screen at a time when it was unfashionable to do so and changed the way women thought about pants forever. She was also unapologetic about her love for both men and women. The movie legend locked lips with women on screen as early as 1930 and was romantically linked with Kay Francis, Edith Piaf, Mercedes de Acosta, and even Greta Garbo. Up next is Freddie Mercury. Freddie, born Farouk Bulsara, 1946-1991, was a flamboyant and legendary British singer-songwriter, best known as the charismatic frontman of the iconic rock band Queen. With his electrifying stage presence, four-octave vocal range, and timeless hits like Bohemian Rhapsody, he remains an enduring symbol of musical brilliance and artistic innovation. Freddie Mercury never publicly spoke about his sexuality, but his friends and family knew that he was gay. He died due to complications from AIDS on November 24, 1991, a period when the virus was running rampant amongst the homosexual community, with little to no assistance in sight. Spencer Tracy was one of the biggest movie stars in the golden age of Hollywood. And if you've been on this channel enough, you know that's saying a whole lot. The actor was married with two kids, and even though he became estranged from his wife Louise, they never divorced, which Tracy claimed was because of his Catholic upbringing. It has been rumored Tracy often stayed at the Philadelphia Story and My Fair Lady director George Cukor's house, who was openly gay. Tracy would stay at Cooker's house for several days at a time, where according to sources, Tracy indulged in fornication with Cooker's young male friends. Tracy is also rumored to have been involved in a long-term relationship with actor John Derrick, 
and according to Scotty Bowers, who was an unabashed pimp to the stars during the Golden Age, Spencer Tracy was a generous, good-hearted man who liked to cuddle after drinking himself into a stupor. Tracy just didn't do this with his most famous leading lady, Catherine Hepburn. Here's what Bowers recalls firsthand in his first in a series of rendezvous with Tracy beginning one night in the early 50s. It was past midnight. After another empty bottle of scotch stood on the coffee table, he began to undress and begged me not to leave him, Bowers recalls, of a night spent with Spencer Tracy. Bowers wrote in his memoir, I could only assume that his pseudo-romance with Kate Hepburn was causing him distress. I climbed into bed with him. He lay his head down at my groin, took hold of my penis. This was the last guy on earth that I expected an overture like that from, but we had an hour or so of pretty good sex. In the morning, Tracy reportedly acted as if nothing had happened, but Bowers reveals it was just the first of many such encounters and adds, I met a lot of influential people through Spence. Speaking of Spencer Tracy, our next contender for this list is the woman who'd been in a relationship with Tracy for the longest time. By several accounts, Hepburn's 25-year relationship with frequent co-star Spencer Tracy was more of a friendship than an actual sexual attraction. Screenwriter and gay rights activist Larry Kramer stated of the famous couple, Hepburn and Tracy were both gay. They were publicly paired together by the studio. Everyone in Hollywood knows this is true, but of course, I haven't seen it printed anywhere. Hepburn was known for her boyish attire, and while she did have an interest in men, it seemed she favored women. Hollywood pimp Scotty Bowers actually met the film Diva Hepburn at a Hollywood party and was amazed that she was wearing a suit and very short hair with a side parting. Bowers recalls the host explaining that Hepburn's movie studio honchos had been pleading with her not to advertise the fact that she was gay. Actors, major directors and producers had moral clauses in their contracts which they would have violated by being openly known as gay or bisexual, Bowers explains. He remembers what Hepburn said to him, I know your reputation, Scotty. When you get a chance, do you think you can find a nice, young, dark-haired girl for me? Someone that's not too heavily made up. Bowers claims he set the siren up with 150 women over the span of 50 long years, which would equal about three women per year. Bowers claims Hepburn would see them once or twice and then tire of them. There was, however, one woman that was none more bewitching than a young beauty named Barbara, with whom Hepburn maintained a 49-year relationship. It seems our resident pimp Scotty Bowers has all the tea for a couple of these closet cases, and the same holds true for the next person on our list, Walter Pigeon. According to Bowers, it all began with middle-aged actor Walter Pigeon in 1946. It started when Pigeon stopped by a Richfield gas station on Hollywood Boulevard and picked up the 23-year-old Scotty Bowers, an ex-Marine pump attendant, by offering a $20 tip. Pigeon drove Bowers to a private home where they joined Jacques Potts. Pigeon invited Bowers to use the swimming pool, saying, It's hot, Scotty. Hop in for a swim. I'll join you in a minute. No need for a suit. There's no one else here. Bowers relates that Pigeon's preference, and this may get a little explicit, was to give Bowers oral sex while masturbating. There were many repeats of this three-way arrangement of the three bisexual men, for which Bowers always earned a $20 bill. This led to Pigeon telling all his gay friends about his new friend, Bowers. After sampling his services, they told their friends about the Marine at the Richfield Station on the corner of Hollywood and Van Ness, complete with a two-bedroom trailer out back, who was happy to hook them up with his young friends, male or female. From there, it went on for years, as Bowers ran a sexual referral service from this gas station, engaging in a Hollywood underground sex trade of sorts. If not participating in sexual relations with the customers himself, he arranged for his money-starved ex-Marine buddies to pick up some extra cash, 
Soon enough, he expanded his base to provide companionship and sex for people of every sexual orientation and interest. Up next on our list is Cesar Romero, a charismatic American actor renowned for his debonair charm and memorable portrayals, notably as the suave and iconic Joker in the 1960s Batman television series. With a devilishly handsome smile and a towering height of 6'3", Cesar Romero was poised for leading man status. The Cuban-American actor appeared on the silver screen alongside Marlene Dietrich and Carol Lombard, was a lifelong best friend to actress Joan Crawford, and became a living legend after playing the Joker in the original film version of Batman. What's not so well known, known about Romero, is that he was gay. He remained in the closet to the public for the entirety of his career, but was out to friends and colleagues in the industry. Greta Garbo, the Swedish-born actress who was a Hollywood star in the 20s and 30s, retired from acting and public life entirely at the tender age of 35. Garbo never married and never had any children, though at least two men. Swedish publisher Lars Saxon and American silent film star John Gilbert are said to have proposed to Garbo three times. However, in a letter on MGM notepaper obtained by the Postal Museum, Garbo writes to Saxon, I will probably remain a bachelor all my life. Wife is such an ugly word. Garbo was a bisexual who was widely known in the Hollywood community and ultimately in the public's consciousness, especially now. Garbo was an attractive woman who was adored by men and women alike, and she returned their love enthusiastically. Garbo has been romantically and sexually attached to several Hollywood female starlets. Instead of lying to the press, Garbo remained silent about her personal life, which lent an air of mystery to her persona. Perhaps Garbo's most notorious relationship was with the aforementioned Marlene Dietrich. Renowned for his good looks and acting talent, Cary Grant quickly rose to stardom in the 1930s. The British-American actor, whose credits included His Girl Friday and North by Northwest, was reportedly a ladies' man whose five marriages didn't do much to quench his need for love. But in recent years, new information has come to light about Grant's personal life. He lived with fellow actor Randolph Scott for a number of years, and rumors have long circulated that the pair were involved romantically. While Joan Crawford is most remembered for ankle strap shoes, enlarged shoulder pads, and drinking 100 proof vodka, few of today's modern movie buffs are familiar with the rumors surrounding her sexuality. It's long been said that Crawford, who had a reputation for being something of a maneta, was actually bisexual. The jury's still out on Crawford's sexuality, but in the years since her death, it's been reported that she had affairs with Barbara Stanwyck, Marilyn Monroe, Martha Ray, and a little-known actress and choreographer by the name of Marion Morgan. For the duration of his career, Rock Hudson was an American heartthrob. He wooed audiences with his good looks and impressive performances and worked hard to keep his private life out of the tabloids. But when Confidential magazine threatened to expose his homosexuality, his career took a back seat. Soon after the confidential incident, he married Phyllis Gates to keep any rumors from circulating. The marriage didn't last, as Gates was aware of Hudson's true sexuality, and the two eventually parted ways. Just a few years post-divorce, in 1962, Hudson met stockbroker Lee Garlington, with whom he shared a lengthy, intimate relationship. His story was even included in Ryan Murphy's 2020 Netflix series, Hollywood. Hudson died from AIDS complications in 1985. Most Hollywood historians admit there's something to assertions that Stanwyck's marriages were studio-backed lavender marriages just created to keep the closet sealed tight on Stanwyck's sexuality. There's also plenty of evidence pointing to Stanwyck being gay or bisexual, though nothing can be said with absolute certainty that Stanwyck was a lesbian. There is enough speculation about the Golden Age's actress's personal life that it seems pretty likely Stanwyck was at least open to girl-on-girl -girl action. 
Even if she weren't a lesbian, her brassy and butch nature, both on screen and off, garnered her a loyal following from lesbians and gays alike. Though Stanwyck's association with the LGBTQ community goes way before that. Biographer Axel Madsen says, unearthing the truth about Stanwyck's sexuality would remain impossible, he continues in saying. People would swear she was Hollywood's biggest closeted lesbian. Actor Clifton Webb once called Stanwyck, my favorite Hollywood lesbian. Even Stanwyck's second husband, Waterloo Bridge, and Quo Vadis star Robert Taylor told actress Shelley Winters that his wife, Stanwyck, was a lesbian, and they didn't share a bed. All the more, lesbian singer Tallulah Bankhead once said she slept with Stanwyck. But of all the people Stanwyck was close to, her most consistent relationship was Helen Ferguson. The two never defined their relationship, but if Stanwyck's marriages to men were described as lavender, the Stanwyck-Ferguson's union may very well have been of the Boston variety. In the book, Encyclopedia of Gay and Lesbian Popular Culture, Luca Prono states that in the 1960s, 1970s, and even into the 1980s, Stanwyck was seen as a cultural and personal template for lesbians. Stanwyck acquired the status of icon within lesbian communities, Prono writes. Stanwyck was a woman whose screen persona challenged respectability because of the strong and independent women she embodied in the 1940s. Stanwyck played the lesbian character of Joe Courtney in Walk on the Wild Side in 1962, one of the first lesbian portrayals in Hollywood. She refused to discuss her own sexuality. In one of the more infamous examples of her reserve on the matter, Stanwyck reportedly threw journalist Bose Hadley out of her house after he asked whether she had ever partaken in lesbian sex as Greta Garbo and Marlene Dietrich had done. Here's how that exchange went. Q. Do you think bisexuality was very widespread among female stars during Hollywood's heyday? A. I heard that Dietrich, Garbo, most of the girls from Europe swing either way. Then I found out it's true. Q. You found out? A. Next. Moving right along. Up next is the woman who claimed to have slept with Stanwyck in the midst of the media, trying to hunt down her sexuality, Tallulah Bankhead. Tallulah Bankhead was a theater actress, film star, and life of the party socialite who enjoyed pushing the envelope as much as humanly possible. Like so many others on this list, she disregarded the conventions of her time and marched to the beat of her own drum. She allegedly spent some intimate nights with Mercedes de Acosta, as well as Greta Garbo, Hope Williams, and of course, Barbara Stanwyck. Known for playing the title role in the 1925 version of Ben-Hur, Ramon Navarro was a mainstay of the silent film era. Handsome and enthusiastic, the Mexican-born Navarro quickly earned a place among Hollywood's rising stars. But behind the glitz and the glamour of the film industry, Navarro was struggling to reconcile his love of men with his Catholic upbringing and turned to alcohol to ease his inner pain. Unable to come to terms with his homosexuality, Navarro took to hiring hustlers in secret to stave off his loneliness. In the late 60s, Navarro's life met a brutal end after he hired two young brothers to come to his home. That story would not end well as the brothers reportedly tortured and killed Navarro and were later convicted, imprisoned and then paroled. Raymond Burr, 1917 and 1993, was a distinguished Canadian-American actor best known for his portrayal of the brilliant defense attorney Perry Mason in the eponymous television series, showcasing his commanding presence and versatility. Much like Navarro, Burr also similarly struggled with his homosexuality. He definitely wasn't as open about it as many others on this list. Unlike Navarro, however, he did not go through the lengths of hiring hustlers to help him out in secret and was content with lying in order to deny his homosexuality. 
Burr famously actually made up stories about a fake marriage to a woman who died and who also had a child that died to cover up the fact that he was gay. Elizabeth Scott was what some used to call the poor man's Lauren Bacall. She was a sultry blonde bombshell with a smoky voice and stellar acting skills, much like the legendary Bacall herself. But she was so much more than an alternate version of someone else. She had a distinct style and grace that put her leagues ahead of her film noir counterparts. Unfortunately for Scott, her potential was cut short by a 1954 expose in Confidential magazine. The tabloid rag accused her of being a deviant with a penchant for baritone babes, a euphemism for lesbians at the time. Although Scott sued the magazine, she was never able to recover from this perceived stain on her reputation and her career reportedly waned because of it. As for whether or not the magazine was right in their claim, it was never really cleared up, but Scott certainly didn't think so. Robert Reed was a versatile American actor remembered for his iconic role as the wise patriarch, Mike Brady, in the beloved sitcom The Brady Bunch, embodying warmth, wit, and timeless family values. Robert Reed may be best known for his role as head of the house Mike Brady on The Brady Bunch, but Reed kept his sexuality a close secret for fear of damage to his career. In his memoir, Sex, Drugs and Pilot Season, casting director Joel Thurm recalled memories of hookups he shared with Reed and also said most of the attendees at industry parties in the 70s were gay. As best known as Norman Bates in the 1960 version of Psycho, Anthony Perkins was a married man with two children. However, he also allegedly had several homosexual affairs in the process. His longest romantic homosexual relationship was reportedly with actor Tab Hunter. According to the notorious Hollywood pimp Scotty Bowers, Perkins was involved with many men, actually. Bowers states about Perkins, he always wanted someone different. Who've you got who's different, Scott? Who do you have for me for tomorrow night that will surprise me? Anything really new? Bowers makes mention, though, that Perkins was fussy about who he saw. Bowers was one of the many men Perkins did see on numerous occasions as he was extremely fond of Perkins. Perkins passed away at 60 years of age in 1992 from, you guessed it, AIDS. Perkins always insisted that Barry Berenson, a photographer and the actress, Marissa Berenson's sister, never knew about his philandering and his double life. At the time of Perkins' death, he was with his wife and their two teenage sons. Perkins' death came as a bit of a shock because Perkins kept silent about his illness. Ms. Berenson states, he simply never wanted anyone to know. While Perkins never wanted his wife, Berry, to know about his double life, she lets on by claiming, he figured if anyone knew, they'd never give him work again. Stand-up comedian and actor Richard Pryor, who was a married man, seven times actually, did cross the line into having a homosexual affair with one of Hollywood's legends. In February of 2018, Richard Pryor's widow, Jennifer Pryor, released a statement to TMZ stating that her husband had an intimate affair with a streetcar named Desire and the godfather, actor Marlon Brando, in the 70s. As she told the publication, it was the 70s. Drugs were still good, especially quaaludes. If you did enough cocaine, you'd fuck a radiator and send it flowers in the morning. This wasn't the first time Pryor's relationship with Brando had been in the news, as music mogul Quincy Jones had also alluded to it in a Vulture interview. Both Jones and Pryor's widow claimed that Pryor was open about his bisexuality with his friends. However, one of Pryor's children, his daughter Rain, later disputed the claim. In his autobiography, Pryor admitted to having a two-week sexual relationship with a transvestite, which he called two weeks of being gay. In a memoir written after his death, Lawton's widow Elsa stated they never had children because Lawton was a homosexual. However, according to actress Maureen O'Hara, Lawton once told her, 
that not having children was his biggest regret, and that it was because Elsa could not bear children as a result of a botched abortion she had early in her career while performing burlesque. Lanchester admitted becoming pregnant by Lawton and aborting the child in her autobiography. However, Scotty Bowers, the Hollywood pimp, makes known that Lawton was a regular client of his for years. One of Lawton's homosexual affairs included his eventual Witness for the Prosecution co-star Tyrone Power. Speaking of which, Tyrone Power was a major heartthrob during Hollywood's Golden Age era, as women were head over heels for power. While on the surface and on screen, he appeared as one thing. Off screen, power was actually much different, according to Hollywood Golden Age pimp Scotty Bowers. How Bowers puts it, women swooned over him, and he bedded quite a few of them, but he, power, much preferred men. Now Bowers doesn't get too specific, but states that he and Ty would get up to quite a few sexual shenanigans together. Even out-of-the-closet homosexual actor Cesar Romero, who was candid in the 1996 book Hollywood Gaze, confirmed that the twice-married Power was, in fact, bisexual. Power actually had an enamored relationship with his eventual witness for the prosecution, co-star Charles Lawton, who had some very unusual sexual fetishes. However, Lawton wasn't alone in that department, as Power himself did too according to Bauer's confessions, as this could explain why the two actors saw each other often, as this could explain why the two actors saw each other often. Star James Dean will be honest, this one's a bit of hearsay, but there are multiple claims of homosexual activity from James Dean at the height of his career. In 2016, a book called James Dean Tomorrow Never Comes alleged that Dean shared a secret relationship with fellow heartthrob Marlon Brando. The authors, Danforth Prince and Darwin Porter, are known for crafting some exuberant stories about old Hollywood, but Thurm's claim of most of the attendees being gay at the parties Dean would have been at have only served to refan the already rampant rumors. His name has come up so many times on this list, it would be more surprising if he didn't make it on here. The other half of the James Dean secret relationship, Marlon Brando, was openly bisexual. In 1976, he told a French journalist, homosexuality is so much in fashion, it no longer makes sense. He then confirmed that, like a large number of men, I, too, have had homosexual experiences, and I am not ashamed. Although open about his sexuality, Brando denied claims of his relationship with Dean in his memoir, Songs My Mother Taught Me. Roddy McDowell was a gifted British-American actor, renowned for his diverse roles spanning decades, from the charming Cornelius in Planet of the Apes to the endearing bookshop owner, Mr. Pevensey, in The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe. Roddy McDowell never spoke publicly about his sexuality, but many biographers have noted that he was gay. Laurence Olivier, 1907-1989, was a towering figure in British theatre and cinema, hailed as one of the greatest actors of the 20th century. His illustrious career included iconic performances in Shakespearean plays, such as Hamlet, and memorable roles in films like Rebecca and Marathon Man. Many of Laurence Olivier's biographers have written that the actor was gay. He was married to three different women throughout his life and never spoke publicly about his sexuality. Tab Hunter was a heartthrob of 1950s and 60s cinema who was first discovered thanks to his good looks at age 17 and immediately put in the pictures while Confidential magazine exposed an arrest in his past for lewdness, which at the time simply meant showing any signs of homosexuality in public, his movie studio dismissed the allegation and the public quickly forgot about them. While he remained closeted for most of his career, he later opened up about his relationship with fellow actor Anthony Perkins in a 2005 memoir, Tab Confidential. Unlike many of her contemporaries in the 30s and 40s, Patsy Kelly didn't hide her sexuality, going as far as to tell one publication that she was a dyke who lived with her girlfriend and would never marry. 
Kelly was romantically linked to actress Tallulah Bankhead, who was also very open about her bisexuality. Clift was involved in a seemingly will-they-or-won't-they relationship with Elizabeth Taylor. It appears Hollywood's inner circles knew of Clift's sexual orientation. Scotty Bowers, who would fix up tricks for Clift while he was in L.A. filming Judgment at Nuremberg, claims that Clift would always want someone new, someone different, someone he hadn't had sex with before. Clift was also excessively fussy and hard to please. Bowers states that Clift once said after he had gone out of his way for him to find the perfect trick for him, his prick is an inch too long. On other occasions, Bowers claims if it wasn't too long, then it was an inch too short, or the guy's hair was not parted properly, or his feet were too small, or his toes too bony. There was always something wrong. Monty was never satisfied. Bowers continued to provide tricks for Monty until he was finished filming on the 1961 film, after which Clift left Los Angeles to settle in New York. Bowers remarks, I cannot say I regretted seeing him leave town. William Haynes, 1900-1973, was a charismatic American actor and interior designer, celebrated for his wit and charm on screen during Hollywood's Golden Age. Despite his acting career ending due to his refusal to hide his homosexuality, he found success as a prominent interior decorator. Though William Haynes never officially came out, he also didn't really hide the fact that he was gay. He was in a relationship with Jimmy Shields for almost 50 years. And finally, our last spot on the list is Liberace. Liberace was an extravagant American pianist and entertainer, renowned for his flamboyant style, dazzling performances, and extravagant lifestyle. With his charismatic stage presence and unique musical talent, he captivated audiences worldwide, becoming a legendary icon of showmanship and glamour. Despite his flamboyant stage presence, Liberace never officially came out as gay. He even went so far as to sue a publication for libel when they printed that he was gay. Liberace's friend Betty White has stated that the musician was in fact gay. So what do you think of these secretive accessions and revelations of the Golden Age stars and Hollywood's yesteryears? Let us know down in the comments section below. If you like this video, you'll love the one showing up on your screen right now. Click now and we'll see you in the next one.